Hi, I'm Hilke, and welcome to my World Machine tutorial series. In this episode, we will dive into the clamp and equalizer device, two commonly used filter devices which are essential tools when creating intricate landscapes. We will start off with the clamp device. The clamp device is a highly versatile yet simple device, which makes it a tool you can use in a lot of different scenarios. Before we start discussing its properties, it is a good idea to hook up some terrain to its board, so we get a better grasp of what it's doing. When opening the properties, we see one parameter standing out, being this slider in the middle. This is the main control of the clamp device, and the low and high inputs kind of act like dials that give you feedback of what this slider is doing. Since this is the core of the clamp device, it is wise to start off with this and then we'll cover the other parameters. That slider is the main control of the height range section, in which we set the minimum height and maximum height of the clamp device's operation. When we decrease the high value by moving the right part of the slider to the left, we see the terrain becomes compressed. Now, we can also move the slider as a whole, and we see the terrain starts to move up and down, but we're no longer compressing it. We can also enter a value into the low or high input field, giving us a tight control over the height range. But compressing the terrain is not all this device can do. The operation parameter is an enumeration of different operations the clamp device can perform. The compressing operation is named rescale, as it quite literally rescales the minimum and maximum height of the terrain to the value of the low and high parameters. You can use this, for example, if you want to ensure your terrain does not exceed a certain height or is never lower than, for example, 100 meters. The next operation is clip, which also ensures your terrain will not exceed a certain height range. But instead of compressing your terrain, it simply cuts off the parts which are out of bounds, creating a plateau at the extremes. If you want a fun exercise, try to recreate this by using two constant and two combiner devices. I will post the solution in the description. The last operation, expand, works a bit different and works together with the find extends button. Let's click on it and see what happens. Both the value of the low and high parameter have changed and we see the terrain looks a lot steeper and taller. When using the expand operation, instead of compressing the terrain, the terrain is stretched out by the clamp by the amount displayed in the low and high fields. This operation has a neat accompanying button, being the find extends button, and when pressed, the clamp quickly analyzes your terrain and determines its lowest point and highest point. The lowest point's elevation will be put into the low field, and the highest point's elevation in the high field. This means that the terrain is stretched this amount downwards and stretched this amount upwards, resulting in a terrain that goes from 0 meters to the world's max height, also known as normalizing. And that's exactly what the normalize input checkbox does, but then automatically. Let's set the operation to rescale again and reset our slider so we do not compress our terrain. Now, when we check the checkbox, we see our terrain gets stretched once again as if we click on the find extends button. The benefit of using normalize input instead of find extends is that the clamp will always update your terrain to be normalized, whereas when using find extends, we need to always press the button again when we change our terrain. The downside, however, is that this is not compatible with tiled builds and the layout view, so keep that in mind. Lastly, we have the soft clipping checkbox. When checked, the clamp will reduce hard edges caused by the clip and expand operations, making the transition smoother and less sudden. The clamp device is a versatile tool, useful for many applications and can help you out in all sorts of scenarios. It is often used to refine masks from natural devices, like the flow map from the erosion device for example. Another common application is to simply lower or increase your terrain's height. Another device that is concerned with the reshaping of your terrain is the equalizer device. But instead of compressing or stretching, this device is all about equally spreading the height values in a height map. This means that it tries to make sure there are as much pixels with a low value as with a high value. Or better said, it tries to distribute the amount of height values evenly. If then, after equalization, you were to select the lowest 25% of the map, 
25% of the map surface would be selected. The equalizer tries its best to retain the original terrain shape whilst distributing the heights of the terrain evenly, but it can cause artifacts sometimes. Let's hook up some terrain and take a look at its properties. When we open the window, we see it has only one slider, a checkbox and two buttons. We start up with the equalization parameter. It allows us to change the amount of equalizing. It is set to 1 by default, at which the equalizer will do its utmost best to fairly distribute the height values. When decreasing the slider's value, we see the distribution changes and at 0 we are left with the original shape, as no equalization is applied. The always normalized checkbox will, when checked, normalize the input terrain before equalizing, reminiscent of the clamps normalize input checkbox. The Capture Sample and Release Sample buttons are related to each other. When pressing Capture Sample, the equalizer will store the current equalization data and when we then hook up another terrain, it will use that equalization data for redistribution instead of basing it of the terrain's height. It's as if you set a certain equalization template and tell the equalizer to always equalize using that template. When pressing the release sample button, this data is lost and the equalizer will base its equalization of the inputted terrain's height again. Another method to use predefined equalization data that, in my opinion, is more intuitive to use is the histogram input port below the primary input. It allows you to hook up a height field and the equalizer will distribute the height values of the primary input according to the height values of the histogram input. The histogram doesn't need to go from zero height to max height as the equalizer will internally normalize it. The equalizer is an intriguing device that lets you have more predictable terrain, as you know for sure the terrain will have all height values fairly distributed. This is especially useful for masks and workflows that handle multiple sources. And that wraps it up for this video. See ya!